Greetings, science family. We are going to be covering two big ideas, fission and fusion, how it relates to the nuclear bombs that affected World War II, and how it's going to relate to eventually getting us to some carbon-free energy and electricity. Let's go. First thing we want to start off with is talking about nuclear fission. To say it simply, when the nucleus is going to split into two smaller nuclei, uh, that is nuclear fission. Now the fission that we've focused on quite a bit is the fission of uranium-235. That was used in one of the bombs in World War II, one of the atomic bombs, and it simply starts by one neutron hitting the uranium-235 isotope. Now remember, uranium-238 is the normal or most popular or most abundant isotope of uranium on the planet. 99.3% of all uranium is uranium-238. So that means less than 1% of all uranium, uranium-235, uh, is, is available. So it's a very, very small amount. And it takes a lot of energy in order to separate uranium-235 from uranium-238. But anyways, once uranium-235 gets hit with that neutron, it absorbs that neutron and becomes uranium-236. That is very unstable and it actually splits apart into two nuclei, Krypton 92 and Barium 141. Just as important is it gives off three neutrons. So you started with one neutron and you ended with three neutron. And that's where the importance comes in for fission and how you can produce a lot of energy. The thing about a fission reaction is you can start what's called a chain reaction. Because you started with one neutron and you ended up with three, one neutron now creates three opportunities for more fission to occur. But if a neutron hits something like uranium-238, it's not fissile material and nothing happens. If it hits another uranium-235 though, that process of fission is going to happen again and it's going to create one, two, three more neutrons. If those neutrons hit uranium-235, the same thing happens again, and more neutrons form. So that means the reaction can continue if you get fission started and you have more uranium-235 atoms available. This is an example of how quick a fission reaction can grow through a chain reaction. Remember, uranium-235 splits and creates three neutrons. Those three neutrons create three more fission reactions, which in the end create another three neutrons each. You can see how you went from one to three to nine neutrons in a very quick amount of time. If you can do this over and over and over again, this can create a huge amount of energy. The question is, why is there so much energy when a fission reaction occurs? Well, the strangest thing happens when that one nucleus breaks apart into two different nuclei, a little bit of mass is lost. It disappears. So if you think of it like if you cracked a cookie in half, put one in each hand, and then you put the cookie back together, you'd have the whole cookie. Well, strangely enough, when an atom splits, if you tried to put it back together, it wouldn't be exactly the same. For some reason, there's a little bit of mass that's missing. The interesting thing is that mass was converted into pure energy. Now, what does that have to do with tons of energy um, being from a small amount of mass? Well, if you look at Albert Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, the idea is if you have even a little tiny bit of mass, but you multiply it by this c squared, it becomes a huge number no matter what. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second. So if you take 300 million and square it, that is a humongous number. So even though the little tiny mass that might be lost in this fission reaction is small, multiplying it by 300 million and by 300 million again makes this tiny number huge. So when a fission reaction occurs, compared to the size of the atom, the amount of energy given off is tremendous. And that's when, unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, depending how you look at it, scientists realize that, oh my goodness, this fission reaction could be used to make a bomb. And the way it works is if you create fission with enough highly enriched uranium, right? We call that HEU for short. If you have enough uranium-235 in one place, you can create a runaway chain reaction, right? 
Here's a picture I, get, I borrowed from viewimages.com. It is a picture of the plutonium bomb that is a runaway chain reaction. That was the second bomb that was dropped in World War II. Let's go into how these guys work. The first bomb dropped in World War II was on August 6, 1945, and that was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. Little Boy was the smaller of the two bombs and actually used uranium, highly enriched uranium, so that it was mostly uranium-235 isotopes. And what it was was a gun-style bomb that actually shoved one piece of uranium into the other extremely fast. As, as long as one neutron moved to another uranium-235 atom, fission occurred and the runaway chain reaction happened. Now remember, if a little tiny uranium atom splits, it's probably enough energy to make like a little tiny grain of rice in your palm jump, okay? Move a little bit. So that's not tons of energy, but when you multiply that energy of a little grain of rice jumping and you multiply it by billions of atoms that all split in less than a second a little tiny grain of rice energy multiplied a billion times becomes a huge amount of energy it's enough to level of city and that's what happened the second bomb fat man not little boy but fat man was dropped on nagasaki three days later in world war ii and this was a different bomb in fact they had to test this bomb ahead of time because they were concerned if it would work or not but long story short, explosives implode plutonium inside the bomb, squeezing it to the point where eventually it reaches a critical mass where it's squeezed so tight that fission begins and then it explodes. So strangely enough, this bomb implodes then explodes all in less than a second. It's so fast, but it goes through fission. And in this case, it wasn't uranium-235, it was plutonium that was being going through fission reaction. Some famous footage of atomic bombs, the famous shape of the mushroom-style cloud happens with all atomic bombs. Buildings were destroyed. Someone said the stat of 77,000 buildings in Japan and 70,000 of them were ruined in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Just incredible destruction. Unfortunately, people were burned from the heat of the bomb. The radiation as well affected people in the fallout. It was a horrific, horrific event. The city really was torn apart and majority of life in those towns stopped. So that was fission, the splitting of an atom. And nuclear fusion is the opposite. Instead of splitting of the atom, you're joining two different nuclei together to make one. So you're shoving a nucleus of one thing and a nucleus of another thing together to make a bigger one. So if you take hydrogen and hydrogen and shove them together, you can make helium. And just like in fission, you end up converting some mass into pure energy and it gives off a huge amount. Fusion is actually what happens in our sun. The gravitational pull in the star is so strong that it shoves hydrogen together at high temps and pressure. And if we want to make fusion occur on planet Earth, naturally, or not naturally, but man-made, we have to somehow figure out a way to make those nuclei join together. Now remember, a nucleus is positively charged, and two positive charges repel each other. So if we want to make that happen, we have to have very high temperatures and pressure. And unfortunately, when we do a fission reaction, we really put more energy in than we get out. So this isn't like this is going to be a great uh, use for energy for us currently. So we haven't commercially used fusion to make electricity because it's really too hard to maintain in its current state. That's not saying that in the future we couldn't use fusion, but for right now, it, the amount of money it takes to make it happen isn't feasible to make a profit and to use for electricity. I do like this picture though. It's of a nice secretary at the nuclear fusion reactor office and on the wall it says our founder, which is silly enough, our son, which is what we basically base our life off of. It is fusion, which gives us the heat to heat our planet. So thank you, son. Just a quick finale, something I just wanted to let you know. For years, we tried to figure out cold fusion, meaning how could we join two hydrogen atoms together to make helium 
in some type of realistic lab conditions, you know. And if we could do that, we could potentially take the hydrogen from water, separate water into oxygen and hydrogen, and find a way to fuse it. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a great way to do that where it's feasible financially, so a company can use that to eventually heat up water, to turn to steam, to turn a turbine, to turn a generator, and make electricity. But in the end, hopefully you have an idea of the difference between fission and fusion and the importance of when matter or mass is converted to pure energy, it is a humongous amount and we measured that through E equals MC squared. All right, thanks science family for listening. Hopefully this helped. Have a great day.